And here we go. Welcome to today's uh, tutorial. Thank you for showing up. This is navigating your division website's dashboard. Uh, this is part one, and it is designed for our division web managers to um, to show you, kind of uh, give you that, that visual illustration on how to uh, convert documents to a PDF and then upload those PDFs to uh, your website using the dashboard. So that's what we're gonna be covering today. Um, Monday's tutorial is part two, and it'll be similar to a certain extent, but it is going to show you how to create those URLs or, or grab those URLs or link a document or a website and then upload those URLs uh, add those to your division website via the dashboard. So there's two different kind of um, processes that that involves. So that's why I decided to do that separately. So let's get going. I am going to share my screen and we will get moving here. So let's see here. I would like to have this. Now, some of you um, aren't sure how to do a split screen. So what you can do is you can minimize your window up here and then you just drag the edge and then I'm going to have the other document up here. So I'm gonna follow along here. Hopefully you can see both documents. Are we good with that? Hopefully, Marilyn? Yeah, yeah I can see both. Okay, no. All righty. So uh, step number one, first of all, uh, as you can see over here on the right-hand side, this is how you access your division website. I would imagine most of you already know how to do that. Um, uh, you can just write that down and keep that on a sticky note somewhere so you know how to get there. The two X's there is where your division number would be. As you can see here on the upper left on my uh, division website, okay? So you would just put the your division number where those X's are. Now, before I get going on some of the other details, I want to once again, reiterate the importance of this resources tab over here on the left. Okay, I'm showing you on the note taking guide. It's right up here on the blue bar. This is where all division web managers or anybody who is in charge of maintaining your website, this is where you need to go first if you have any questions or don't know how to upload something. You click on the resources, and then you click on that big support training button, okay? Uh, once you click on that, it's gonna take you to the support and training page where you're, you're going to find all sorts of different video tutorials on how to customize your division website. Uh, there are two parts to that. This simply tells you what's on the division website. And then down here, you're gonna have a, a number of different categories uh, of that reflect what's on the division website and um, with detailed and concise handouts. The detailed has some images on there. The concise only has uh, words, no images. So those are how-to handouts. And here's an instructional video that goes along with the instructions. So you can just scroll down here. If you're gonna upload a leaders list, you might want to print out this detailed handout and view the video before, or if you've not uploaded a leaders list uh, in the past. So I can't reiterate enough uh, the importance of going to that support and training page um, first, okay? And then, uh, and then if you have other uh, questions, of course, you can always go to questions for calrta at gmail.com for any of your technology related questions. Okay, so I wanna get that out of the way first. Now, this uh, tutorial, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, is all about uploading PDFs. Okay, so I'm going to show you first and, and I know that some of you, you know, already know how to do this. So this is, this is just kind of a repeat. But if you've had difficulty in the past converting a document to a PDF, I'm going to show you very quickly four different uh, methods that you can use to convert a document to a PDF. So I have a publisher document, two Word, 
Word documents, and a publisher. Okay, so I'm going to show you each of these. So the first one is a newsletter. This is publisher, and I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to minimize that by sliding it over. So this is a uh, published uh, newsletter done in publisher. So the first strategy is to follow this one. So you're going to pick file, save as, or save a copy, uh, depending on which one you see on your computer, and then you choose PDF. So here we go. You're going to go up to here to file up in the upper left-hand corner. Click on that. On this menu, I'm going to look for a save as or a save copy. So here's the save as. I'm going to save this to my PC, my personal computer. And I, if you've attended any of my trainings where I've done this, I save everything to my desktop so I can easily find it. <laughs> and then I can file it later where I want. Now, down here, you notice that it says it's a publisher file. I need to save it as a PDF. So there's an arrow here. And the menu says PDF down here. So I have to choose PDF from all of these options. PDF, mm. okay. PDF, here's the title of my document right here. Now I need to choose where I want to save this. I want to save it to my desktop, okay? So you can move this up and down, choose where you want. I save it to my desktop. So right up here in the top left, I'm saving it to my personal computer, to my desktop, okay? Now I'm gonna go down here and click my save button. Notice that it is publishing it to a PDF right now, okay? So now I can click out of this and right here, this big colorful icon uh, because I, I have Chrome, it saves it to uh, PDF using my Chrome. Uh, but you can see that this document is a PDF and this is the PDF version of my publisher file, okay? And this will change in a moment, it won't look like that. Okay, so the second method, at least on my computer, this is the option. Oh, by the way, on your Mac, um, you can usually do file, save as, and then choose PDF. So it's very similar to the process I just took you through. All right, I'm gonna open a second document. All right, so this is um, a meetings document. It would go in the meetings file on my page. I'm gonna go to file, save as Adobe PDF. File, right here on my menu, on my computer, I have a save as Adobe PDF right here. I can click that. A, a window pops up. Notice that it already says save as type and it already has PDF right there. There's the title of the document. I wanna make sure that it is saving to my desktop. So it says PC and desktop, and I go down here and I click save. Notice that it is converting it. I use Acro Acrobat PDF Maker. It opens up a preview of the PDF so I can check it if I want to. Click out of that. Click out of this. There it is, okay. See how that other one changed over here? It doesn't have the big circle. So I have two of them done. The third method is file, export, create PDF. On a Mac, it's file, export to, and PDF. So I'm gonna open this one, okay. Stretch this out a little bit. File export. So I'm going to go to file. Down here to export. This is super easy, the export one. 
because it's the same on your Mac as it is on your PC. Export, and then you, you find create Adobe PDF or PDF. I use Adobe, so that's why it's showing this. So I can click a little box here. If you don't see that little box, you just pick it over here, the PDF option. So I'm going to click on that. And why is it not doing that? Okay, let's try this one. There we go. Window opens up. Notice that it's already saved here as a PDF. Here's the title, PC, desktop. So I know where it's gonna be going and save. This time it's not asking to publish. I'm not quite sure why. Gives me a preview. Looks good. I'm gonna get out of that. Click out of that. There it is up here. All right, now the last one is I use an online free PDF converter program. This is the one that I use because I think it's super, super easy. There are others out there. I do emphasize free. You don't need to pay to convert uh, a, a Word document or a publisher file to PDF. Now I have this uh, program saved down here at the very bottom of my, on my toolbar. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. So this is what free pdfconvert.com looks like. I'm gonna slide this over just a teeny bit. Okay, just a reminder, I need you guys to mute your microphones if you would. Okay, so there's two ways I can get my document in here is you're gonna drop it right where it says choose file. I can click on choose file and I can search my desktop, which is really crowded here. And I can find my file here, but that's that's too crowded for me. So I, that's why I like to do this split screen where I minimize my screen by dragging the edges. And now I can just hold my left cursor down on my mouse. And yes, I'm old school. I use my mouse. Hold down that left button. And I just drag it and drop it right where this red bar is. Notice how it's processing it. It takes a second. Be patient. There it goes. And when it's ready, it says download. So here's the document I just put in there. I can download it. And it asks me where I wanna save it. And of course you all know, I save it to my desktop. So down here, notice that it says it's, it's a PDF. I'm saving it to my PC and to my desktop. Down in the right-hand corner, I'm gonna click save. I can get out of PDF converter. There it is. All right. I have my four documents saved right now. Okay. So I'm gonna go back here and you know what? I think that this is probably a good place actually to stop for questions. So. Any questions yet on this conversion process? I don't see any, no. Any hands up? No, no hands. These, these are pretty self-explanatory. These are pretty good options. Here are the directions for your Mac. Okay, I, want, I don't wanna leave out my Mac people. I have a tendency to do that. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead. If you do think of a question, go ahead and type it in the chat and we'll go from there. So now, Box number three, I took this um, snip right out of the dashboard. So when you are uploading something using the dashboard, um, those are the options. These are the categories that you can choose from to upload your uh, PDF to. However, not all categories, uh, well, most of the categories take a PDF. So I'm going to show you on here, on the dashboard, or excuse me, on your website, where each of these is. So 
your the first one here is your leaders. That's this column right here. These names right here are not added with a PDF. Okay, these are added using the online communication form. Okay, but this view more right here, the view more when clicked on will take the viewer to a PDF that you have created and uploaded. Okay, now I've I've customized this because I've added photos and, and titles and things like that. Okay, and tried to make it fancy. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy, but when I talk about uploading to leaders, that's what I'm talking about, that PDF that goes in the view more. The second one over here on the right is meetings. That's this column right here. That's not the coming events. Coming events are single events, one event over here. The meetings is a PDF that provides general information about when your membership meetings are and when your board meetings are. Now, this is a PDF. Most of your um, meetings columns, the PDFs show just this part up here. Okay, Marilyn Smith created um, these headings for each of your um, each of your meetings, PDFs, and most uh, have, you know, the, the times of the luncheon meetings and things like that. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about when we upload to meetings. It's the PDF that goes in the view more. The third one is newsletters. You guys are well aware of newsletters. Uh, the newsletter PDFs, you can't upload a Word document. It has to be a PDF. You can't upload a publisher document. Uh, we'll go right in here, as you well know. Photos. I'm talking about the photos up on that blue menu bar, not the photo carousel. Okay, so the photos up on the blue bar are photos that you have added to a Word document, okay, you've copied and pasted onto a Word document and you've saved it as a PDF. So you might get something like this, where I took all of these photos and I copied them and arranged them onto a Word document and saved it as a PDF. Now you can also use a collage maker if you want to, but, um, but, when I'm talking about photos, see each of these pictures was added to this document and then saved as a PDF. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about photos. Notice that they're not individual photographs, okay? Over here back, uh, the resources link is over here. Okay, the resources again, uh, takes PDFs as well as uh, links. The resources are typically um, items and websites of interest to seniors or retired educators. So for instance, this one is a 2022 Medicare cost. It's a PDF, as you can see up here, it says PDF. Okay, so that's the kind of uh, information. I've got links, I've got... Um, uh, documents from HICAP, um, things like that. Okay, so that's what goes into resources. And then scholarships and grants also takes PDFs. It could be, for instance, an article that uh, you want to post about scholarship uh, or grant winners, maybe with their pictures. Okay, so this is a PDF that I created. And then finally is the updates category right here. And the updates, um, what you typically put in the update category would be um, timely documents, documents or items that could change. And then you have to go in and, and provide perhaps an updated version of something. Um, so notice these, I've got free retirement events. So after October 19th, I should come back in and delete that. Um, so here's a PDF that, that uh, advertises a, um, a pre-retirement event that's uh, going to be hosted on October 19th. 
So that's what goes into updates that could be maybe even your bylaws or your uh, board minutes could go into the updates. Um, this is a flyer that just came out. Uh, this is a good thing to, to, to post. Um, you can use this document, you can create an image, whatever you want. But um, all different things go in the updates, but usually they're very timely, something that's just come out or that maybe you're gonna need to update later. Okay, so those are the categories that receive PDFs that will allow you to upload a PDF. And I've shown you uh, where on the division website each of those items goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and field some questions now. We're down to the questions. And I see that there are four in the chat. Marilyn? Um, I answered Jim's. Um, Anna Castro has a question. Okay. Uh, was Jim's question something that everybody needs to know? He just wanted to know what the difference was between save as and export. And basically there is no difference. It gets you the same thing. Yes. I think, um, I find that export is, it. I think it skips a step. So it's a little quicker. And the fact that, you know, it's the same on the uh, PC as it is basically on your Mac, that's kind of a, a convenience. I use export all the time. Because when you export it, PDF, you don't have to go down and choose PDF. PDF yeah, is already true. there. Yeah. Okay. So, but if you go save as, then you have to go, you know, save as, and then you have to click that down <laughs> menu and choose PDF. So it saves a step. I mean, it might save you five seconds, 10 seconds. So, yeah. um, Anna Castro? Oh, she asked, where do you want find me you? to ask the question? Yes, please. Okay. I noticed um, how attractive the collage of photos looks. Where do we learn how to do a collage to post? Okay. I will, um, I will share that link with you. I just, I th I'm trying to think, I think I go to Adobe Collage Maker or something like that. Uh, there are all sorts of free collage makers out there. Uh, and after you um, get used to using it, uh, it's very, very easy. And um, all of these are just photos that you just, I just drag and drop them in. And um, along with uh, the image of our division website and it creates the collage for me. So I will send everybody a link to that. Okay. Can so I ask a further question? Sure. Are we limited to the amount of megabytes when we do a collage or does that matter? I don't know, uh, Marilyn, can you answer that? Well, we're limited to 20 megabytes for anything we upload. Okay. So whether it includes only text or text and photos or only photos, it's 20 megabytes. And we're going to talk about kind of cleaning up and making sure we go in and delete those items that are old that go way back at least two years, three years. Okay, we'll talk about that at the end. Okay, any other questions? Mary? Um, my question was, can those resources be shared with other divisions for us to be able to put on our website? These right here? Yes. Um. There's no way that I know what to share. So for instance, um, I just went on to Medicare. I, I went on to Medicare's website, I think, and got this, or most of these are actually links to um, resources that are already on the CalRTA website. Because okay. the CalRTA website has what's known as the resource library. And, um, uh, I get a lot of the links and a lot of the, the PDFs and things from the CalRTA website, actually. So if there were a way to share those, it would be really nice for our divisions to have a lot of those on our, our websites. Okay, this is what um, I'm going to be covering on Monday, how to go in and snag those URLs off of the Cal CalRTA website and post them as resources onto your division website. Okay. Okay. So that's Mondays and I'm going to record that as well. Okay. A couple more questions and then we're going to have to move on in a minute. 
Judy Fletcher. Uh, my question is about the retired um, Teachers Week um, information that's shared on the website. Um, are they automatically PDFs or do we have to make them into PDFs? I believe, uh, I don't know, I can't remember right now and I don't have time to go to the website. That's okay. And look, but- That's I, okay, Sue, just, you can get back to me later on that. Got it, that, that's a good question though. So thanks for asking. Uh, go ahead okay. and type, type that in, in the chat if you would, because that'll remind me to go and do some research. Yeah, it is in the chat. Excellent, yeah. thank you, okay. Um, Lee asked if links mean hyperlinks, and yes, the terms are interchangeable for us. Yes. Okay. Any That's others? It. That's that it. All righty. Shirley has a question. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Shirley. Shirley, you're muted. Got to unmute. Press your space bar down. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, the pictures uh, that you put online, the question I have is, um, when you have so many pictures, for instance, or any of uh, uh, students and so forth, uh, what about the, the privacy issue there? So, um, uh, do you get, uh, do you, you know, do you get uh, uh, individual permission from each one of the subjects of these pictures? Yeah. Uh, you can do that, but school districts also, uh, students, students uh, are usually, they usually sign oh, the, okay, I need, I'm hearing background noise, so I need somebody to mute. Thank you. Um, so school districts typically have uh, parents sign those kinds of release forms. Um, usually we ask each of our students, our scholarship winners or our grant winners um, mm -hmm. permission to post their pictures. So it's, it's always good to ask and get a, a written release. And if you need a release form, um, go ahead and type that in the chat and I can make sure y'all get those. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anything else? Are we good? I think so. I don't see anything else. Okie dokie. Now, number four on your note-taking guide. Um, again, these are the seven categories and I've noted over here where those documents go. So the leaders, again, goes under that view more button and it's a PDF. The meetings also under the view more button, it is a PDF. The newsletter can only be a PDF. These down here, photos, resources, scholarships and grants and updates, they will take a PDF or that URL or that link, hyperlink, okay? And so uh, after Monday's training, you can decide which one is the easiest route to go to um, uh, provide or upload information to those categories there. So the reason I made these hyperlinks right here, by the way, is if you click on, if you click on those, each one of those is going to take you to the how-to document on how to post the PDF in your leaders section. Okay, so those hyperlinks are going to take you to um, the, the support and training page that I showed you earlier, but this will just save you the step of getting there. So if you need help or you wanna print the handout, just click on that blue link and it'll take you there. All righty, we're gonna go ahead now and um, get into the actual um, uh, division uh, dashboard. So here in number five is the address to get there. Uh, this is, Obviously, you don't go to Div 101. You would use your division number, okay? So up here, I'm going to type div 33calrtaorg slash wp-admin, okay? So there it is up here in the corner. And again, you need permission 
to do this, okay? Anybody in CalRTA can't just, just go in and um, log into the dashboard. Ron Scott, who's our IT guy for CalRTA, he needs to give you permission to do this and he provides you the credentials and adds you to the list, okay? So this is not for anybody to just go in and change the division website. Okay, so once I go to this address, you're gonna see box number six. Um, you're going to put your member number in and your last name in lowercase letters. That's your login for CalRTA and log in. And then you're gonna get right to the dashboard. So we're at box number seven right now. Now to add PDFs, you're going to look only at the media, at media. Okay, don't go down to this bottom part. This is for Monday's training. You're gonna to go to media, okay? Box number eight. And all PDFs are considered media, just so you know. So I'm going to slide this over just a little bit because I've got all my little documents over here that I want to add. So let me go through this process with you. Oh, okay. So you're gonna go and hover your cursor over media. And you notice that this little menu pops out. You wanna to go to add new, cause you're gonna add a new document. And you click on that. And it takes you to this dotted box that allows you to upload your PDF document. Notice that you have two ways of doing that. And I showed you this earlier. You can either drop, drag and drop the file, or you can go select file, go and find it wherever it is on your computer. You got to find it. I mean, look at this. Holy cow. That's why I keep things on the desktop. Okay. So what do I want to do first here? I want to... Um, Let's add a newsletter first, okay? We're gonna add a newsletter first. So there's my newsletter, it's on my dashboard. It is a PDF, see I see the, the icon there, it's a PDF. I'm just gonna hold down the left side of my mouse and I'm gonna drop it right there. And notice what happens. This is in box number 10, all right? So it shows here that it has uploaded, notice that it says maximum size, 20 megabytes. So that's the limit. Okay, now next step is, I need to go back to media and go and see if it has been added to my library. So media and then down to library. This is my media library right here. A new item will always show in the top left. So here it is, the September, October newsletter that I just dragged and dropped into that box. It's right here. Now I need to, box 12, click on and prepare this for upload. So I'm gonna click on it. Okay, you're not gonna see an image of it. You're only gonna see this up here. Now, over here on the right, I need to give it a title. Now, I don't need it to say email color. I'm gonna delete that. Keep your titles, by the way, short and sweet. And if you look at box 13 on your note-taking guide, only use the letters A through Z and only use the numbers zero through nine. Don't use dollar signs, exclamation marks, quotation marks, anything like that, because it will not print properly, okay? It won't show up properly. There'll be all, the, all sorts of funky characters that show up in the title. So keep it simple. You don't need to put the name of the newsletter. You don't have to put your division number because it's on your division webpage. So just put the date, perhaps, and the months. Now, if you add a caption, that caption, not in newsletters, by the way, but in 
photos and other areas, the caption will appear right underneath. And I can show that to you in a second. The description is basically only for your own personal uh, use. So if you're going in and you're like, I don't remember what this document is, you can go in and look at your description, but it's not gonna show anywhere. Now, the most important part is this. Here, is, here are those categories that I showed you earlier and I had those little red check or the red arrows pointing at. You have to uncheck this uncategorized label. Uncheck by clicking on it. Now, this is a newsletter, so I want to make sure that I check newsletters. That's where I'm going to place it. Okay, this is a step that a lot of people forget. And then they email us at questions for CalRTA and they say, I have uploaded my newsletter, but it's not showing. Well, that's usually the, the problem is you forgot in the categories here to uncheck this uncategorized. Okay, if the uncategorized stays checked, it's not going to show anywhere. It'll be in your library but it's not gonna show anywhere on your division website. So make sure that you choose the appropriate category where you want that document to go. Okay. Box 14, check to see if it uploaded to the right place. So, well, I on step 13, I have to click the X. Now, when I say click the X, you click this X, don't click the one way up in the top of your computer screen. That'll shut down your whole, you know, all your windows. This is part of, it's, it's just opposite where it says attachment details. Okay, so click this X here. That closes out the upload window. Now, I need to make sure that it uploaded to the right place. So there's a black bar this shows me that I'm logged in. I'm gonna follow that black bar over here to the left to my division name. And you can click right on your division name to visit the site. Notice the black bar is still there. So I can still get back to my dashboard. Okay, I haven't left my dashboard. Now I'm gonna look here under my newsletters and there it is. Make sure that it uploaded accurately. It did, looks good, it's all there. Excellent. So I'm going to click an arrow here to get out of that. I know it's good. So now I can go back to the dashboard and do another upload if I want to. So I'm gonna go up here to the name of my division. See how this is a little blue icon here? You can click on that and it's going to take me right back to the dashboard. Okay, any questions so far? I think a couple more have been added. Mm, yeah, I don't see any hands up or questions. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple more just so you can see it. So I'm gonna move my Word documents out of the way and get my others over here. Okay, so. Let's take a look. Here are some photos of my board that I wanna post. So I'm going to go once again to media, add new. I'm gonna drag this and drop it. Notice it's loading, it's crunching it, it has to crunch it to make it, 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 it condenses it. Uh, because of the photos. Now I wanna make sure that it's in my library. So I'm gonna go up to library. It should be in the upper left-hand corner. There it is, entire board. This is my, my photo, entire board. I'm going to click on it. I'm good with my title right here, pretty short and sweet. I don't need a caption and I don't need a description. I need to uncheck and I'm going to put it in photos, okay? Now I'm gonna click the X. I'm going to go and see if it's in the photos. I'm gonna visit my site. 
I'm going to go to photos. Entire board. There it is. Okay. I'm going to do a couple others real quick. Just for the sake of, I'm going to return to my dashboard, by the way. Okay, so I've done that one. I need to add something to my meetings, meetings. So once again, media, add new. Drag and drop, it's loading, it's done. Library. Meetings. I like the name. I don't need a caption. I don't need description. Uncheck. Click on meetings. X out. Return to the site to see if it's there. Remember, it's in the view more. Yep. My other one had a picture of the uh, venue on it and things like that. Okay. So that's good. I'm going to return to the dashboard. I'm going to do one more. Okay. The next one is just a list of my leaders. Okay. So once again, media, add new. Drag, drop, it's loading, it's done, library, make sure it's there, division leaders, there it is, I'm going to add the date, by the way, you should add the date, okay, because sometimes we see leaders lists and we have no idea what years they're for. So it's always good to, to add the years in there, okay? I don't need captions or descriptions. I'm gonna scroll down, uncheck, and I'm gonna add this to leaders, okay? X out, return to the site. This one is gonna go down here in the view more. There it is. Okay. All right. Any questions? Oh, hang on. Marilyn, do we do we have any questions on this process? I don't see any. Okay. I do want to show you this at the end. So we have an issue right now with um both the state and the division websites. They're uh, what you might term bloated with old, old PDFs and um, photos that go back years and have never been deleted, even though they're, they're you know, way old. So let me show you how to delete um, a file, okay? You can go into uh, all you have to do is you go into your library because that's where everything is stored, most everything. And in your library, look at all these things. Now, some of these only, they're, they're even current here, okay? But some of these, um, like this Avid Grants goes back to 2018, 2018. I don't need something that goes back to 2018. It's probably good to keep um, these PDFs for a couple years, but if they go past that, I would consider, you know, um, I, I, I would strongly consider deleting them, okay? Because that, that will get rid of the, the bloat, okay? So if you go in and you click on the document you want to delete, you just scroll down to the bottom and down here in the lower right, it says delete permanently. Just click on that. You get this little message. You're about to delete something. Can't be undone. Are you sure you want to do it? Okay. And it deletes it. See, it was here. 
Okay. The same thing with this one. This is like 2019. So that's three years old. I can click on this, scroll down to the bottom, delete permanently, and click OK. So I, I would strongly suggest that uh, you division web managers um, go into your library and look at the documents that are way, way at, at the bottom. Those are the oldest ones. And um, uh, I'm going to stop sharing. Those are the oldest documents that are in your library. And you can, you can go ahead and delete those. Uh, Marilyn, go ahead. When you go into your library <clears throat> and you go down to the bottom, if you have a NIST down there, and I found out how <clears throat> prolific I was for a while, um, it will say, next page or load next page something like that and then you'll really find the old ones yeah yeah it depends on how much you've added over time yeah but i mean some of those you know are pictures of division leaders from five years ago six yeah. years ago ten years ago so i mean honestly you don't need all of that uh jim sterling is there an easy way to view those files? How do you know that it's for the one you want to delete? If it doesn't, if it doesn't have a caption on it or something that gives you a date, can you click on those and view them? How let me you... let me go back into um, the dashboard. Let's see here. So I'm going to go into my library. Okay, if I scroll way down here, so this tells you showing 77. So I don't have a second page, unlike Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so like this scholarship article, there's no date on it. Up here, it tells you who uploaded it and when. Okay, now. Excellent. Marilyn. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If if I did not upload that, I can't delete it, can I? That's right. Only the person who uploaded it can delete it. So this is what, here's the solution to that. This is where you can send an email to questions for CalRTA. Or you can contact Marilyn. You can contact me. Um, and you can say, I would like to delete these files. I did not add them in. They're really, really old before my time. Um, and, you know, provide the description, whatever the title is on that document. So I would say scholarship article in the lower left of my library, or, you know, I want to get rid of the map because we're not using that meant that venue anymore. The map, which is in the lower uh, left of my library. So that would be the only thing that you could do if you were not the person who uploaded it. And that's part of the problem is as far as deleting things. So, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to stop sharing and come back to our, our group. Uh, any other, oh, I see, um, Eleanor, go ahead, unmute. I was just wondering if you advised, uh, if this is not a customary procedure with your your division, whether you should uh, let the board members know that you're doing this before you just go ahead and do it. I think, that they... that would be, I think that that would be a very, very yeah. good thing to discuss because first of all, um, there might be, for, in, for instance, on my, the meetings, PDF that I upload. I have a I have an image of the venue and I have a map that I that I had there. So I don't want somebody to go, even though that that image of my venue was added like four years ago, whatever. I don't want somebody else going in there. Tim Mathis is my my cohort in this in Division 33. So I don't want Tim to go in and and 
sent an email to questions for Keller RTA and say, we want to, I want to remove this photo here that's on there. Okay. So yeah, it's really good for you to, to suggest to the board. Here are some documents we have in our library. They're super old. Do I have your permission to delete them? Okay. So I, I think that that would be, um, you can always go, you know, go in and take a screenshot of those if you want to as well. So you can actually show those to um, maybe your board members. Uh, Jim, go ahead. Is there any way you can uh, get rid of them besides deleting? Could you download them somehow and save them? No. no. I don't, I have not figured out a way to do that. If I can come up with a way to do that, I'll make sure I share it with you. <laughs> but right now, I don't, I don't think so. Marilyn, go ahead. Another way, we were talking about this for a different use the other day, but another way you can see what that is, Jim, well, if you're questioning what it is, you go in, you find that particular document or whatever in your library, and underneath the title, um, oh my gosh, um, there's a URL. You can find a URL. It's over here. Yeah. There's smoke in the hallway. Oh gosh. I need you. I need you to mute, folks. Please. Okay. So there's the URL. You can copy a URL to clipboard and paste it somewhere, I suppose. And save that. That would be I, a workaround. Yeah, I I honestly I don't know. I don't see anywhere on here where you can download it. If you then delete it, it won't exist anymore when you click on the link. That's correct. That's correct. Because once it's deleted, as they say, um, you know, it, it's gone for good. So that's why they ask you, are you sure or you want to do this? Okay. Other questions? Diana, go ahead. Um, two things. I noticed that I haven't tried this yet on someone else's, but when I went to, oh, wait a minute, I got to get back there again. Um, Do you want me to on, go on to, on to in the, the- In the library, okay. um, on where the document is, if you go down to the bottom, there's a place where it says um, view attachment. And when I- clicked on view attachment it opened the document and I could see it okay so on view open click your document and go down to the bottom on the right all the way to the bottom and click on view attachment and then it opens it okay yeah you can see it there wow so oh there's your download yeah right there you're you're excellent. I'm I'm gonna hire you. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. so, so, um, so let's let's take a look at this again here. Um, okay, this is really really good. So if you want to check out what the document is before you decide to delete it, or see here because you don't see the image, you don't ever see the image here. Scroll down, and down here where that delete permanently is is view attachment page. So click that. This is really good. I didn't even know this. Good for you. And then right here, this little down arrow is your download. You can download it to, and you can save it to your computer. Excellent. I didn't know that. Learn something new. Wow. Okay. We have about. Okay. So when I first clicked that, I actually had a question, yeah. not share something. Um, how, how long would you, I noticed that on the website, it only shows about 10 of the newsletters at any time. So two years, two years worth actually. Okay. Um, so, oh yeah, that's right. Cause that's 10 is two years. <laughs> so <laughs> how I was going to say, how long would you suggest we leave old newsletters in this library? Just those would, two years? I would, yeah, because nobody's going to be, it, they're not going to appear 
here or be accessed by anybody after that beyond that two year span. Right. If I have a, uh, a September 2020 newsletter, I might as well delete it or download it and save it if I want to, if I don't want to delete it permanently, um, because nobody's going to be able to see it anyway. So why keep it in the library? So if I was sending an email to someone, because there was someone else who was doing this um, for quite a while, if I sent an email and asked everything and asked that everything from 20, from 2019 and earlier, ask someone to delete it, they could just delete all of them for me? Marilyn would have uh, be able to do that. I would be able to do that. And um, um, if the person who uploaded them is still around and knows their logging credentials, they'd be able to do it. Or Ron Scott can do it at okay. questions. Yes. The person, um, I don't even, it's June. No, what's her name? Oh, no, there's no, no. What if it's no author? Oh, I don't even know what that is. And one of us would have to do that. Marilyn. Joanne, Joanne Arg, Argy, Argy, Argres, A-R-G-Y-R-E-S. Do you know who that is? I do not. But if it's, okay. if, it's, if it's old enough, I mean, she might not remember her login and how to do this anyway. So um, I think we, I'll just send it to you guys. I would just send it to us because we can do that pretty quickly like that. So great. Doesn't... Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Well, I, I hope that this has been helpful. Um, as I said, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do the links or the URLs on Monday and it, it involves a little bit of a different process, but I'll be sending out the note taking guide for that. And um, I will be recording that just like I, I'm recording this one. So, um, you know, if you need, if you can't be there on Monday because you've got a conflict, that's fine. Uh, at least you could view the video and follow the steps and use the note taking guide. So, um, thank you all for being a wonderful audience this morning. I appreciate it. If you have any other questions, uh, please don't hesitate to email either me, Marilyn, um, or questions for calrta at gmail.com. Uh, and the questions for CalRTA, remember the four is a, a numeral four, questions for CalRTA. Uh, we will get back to you. We answer all your questions. Um, I will be following up and sending you, as always, a, um, a feedback form on this and uh, any other materials. If there's anything else that you wanted me to send you, uh, just send me an email and let me know or type it in the chat and I'll make sure it gets to you all. Okay. Otherwise, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Hope to see you all on Monday. Take care, y'all.